bringing news that matters to you. You're watching the Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. I'm Shashina Rule. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, Guam Bahamas economy is about to witness a significant turning point with the introduction and infusion of several new businesses this year. This announcement coming from an executive of the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Sean Davis Rule reports. The winds of economic change are now blowing on Grand Bahama. This according to the chairman of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Ian Thayer. Fair has announced renewed investor confidence in the creation of new public-private partnerships as a series of new businesses will be launched on Grand Bahama. Within a few months, Morgan Oil will enter the local market with a project that entails a collection and treatment of marine waste, such as sludge and oily slops. Their license has been approved, the land lease agreed, an environmental impact study is being finalized, contracts have already been signed with major shipping agents, a barge and tugboat have been commissioned and is ready to collect the waste oil. We expect the first phase of the hydrocarbon recovery plant to be operational by mid-2013. There's competition for this business, with two, up, two part, other interested and qualified parties. So this is not just a one-horse race. Competition is good for all of us. Fair says the list of new enterprises does not stop there. Another newcomer, Caribbean Tobacco Enterprises, a wholly owned Bahamian company, proposes to set up a tobacco packaging plant for products that will carry a Made in the Bahamas label. This will be the first company in the country to process and package tobacco products predominantly for export. We're also eagerly anticipating the proposed Okeanos Heart Institute to officially open on Grand Bahama, which will provide cardiac stem cell therapy to patients with chronic coronary artery disease. A major remodeling for Wendy's is planned this year. In May of this year, Marco's Pizza will arrive on Grand Bahama with a total of 20 construction workers and 50 permanent employees upon completion. It's a half million dollar investment. Fair also disclosed that the green light has been given by the port for other projects, two of which involve alternative energy. Two solar-related projects are currently in development. One will consist of the manufacture of solar panels, and the other is the construction of a solar plant aimed at supplying energy to the existing grid. We've received a proposal for a beach adventure and activity and par park experience to cater in particular to the cruise ship market, but also to the Bahamian public. This project is expected to commence construction within the second quarter of 2013. We are working closely with the Ministry of Tourism on a proposal to bring a major call center to Grand Bahama within the fourth quarter of this year. We're looking into the creation of a regional arbitration center to support our recently enacted legislation. We've been at the drawing board and plans are afoot for a new residential community in the Discovery Bay area. Work is expected to begin in May of this year on the former bowling alley for the development of a $2.5 million medical device manufacturing company. With its projections, this development is anticipated to employ 15 persons in year one and move to a headcount of 130 in year four. Assembly at the facility is scheduled to commence in October of this year. Joan Davis Roll, Sedanas Network News. In other news, as the Bahamas prepares to celebrate 40 years of independence, a local pastor says a prosperous way ahead begins with addressing some major challenges here on Grand Bahama. You say, say what you want to say. Bishop Godfrey Williams says in order to move forward for the Bahamas' 40th anniversary of independence, we have to fix the things that are wrong. With all the powers that be present, including Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie, Bishop Williams took the opportunity to share his concerns on Grand Bahama, beginning with the high cost of electricity. It was spoken about over and repeatedly, but this high power bill must be reduced and made affordable for all Bahamians. How many houses got air conditioning and can't even turn them on? Man, enough is enough, summer coming. He also addressed another pressing issue. The water table is being contaminated. And we're drinking water. You got to be careful what's going on now. Where's all the cancer coming from? And when you check out, even in, in, I would say, certain areas, because I don't want nobody to panic. You, you see so many people from a particular area 
in Grand Bahama is dying from cancer. Something has to be done. And with Grand Bahama having the highest unemployment rate in the country, he says the immigration problem must also be addressed. My question is, why does it take 10 to 15 years just to teach a Bahamian something or how to do a job? Something has to change. We're not that dumb. Amen. In these next 40 years, I come with a taking over mindset. The pastor then gave these words of encouragement to the nation's leader. Honorable Cousin Christy. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you continue to show interest on behalf of your people. The folks will try to distract you, sir. Because some doesn't like what you're doing. But if your people go down, go down with them. But God has lifted you up with a vision to go forward. I come to tell you this afternoon, you must drive and go forward. You're not alone. There are some others who shared your vision. That these people in Grand Bahama, who without the electricity, who cannot even cook a hot meal, oh glory be to God, it's time now for them to be delivered. Well, the first in a series of Tell Us Town meetings was held in Freeport last evening as the local independence committee seeks to find out who should be recognized as un unsung heroes in the community. It is all in keeping with the country's 40th anniversary of independence. Sabrina Brown reports. The Independence Committee now has the first list of names of dedicated Bahamians that residents would like to see honored during the upcoming 40th anniversary celebrations in July. During a town meeting at the Foster Pestina Center Monday night, residents made their choices known. Among them, veteran educator Dr. Cecil Thompson. Always helpful in taking in um, young um, boys and girls who are um, released from the boys and girls at the school. All of the other principals, they were reluctant to take them in, but Mr. Thompson, once I can take them to him, he will always accept them and, and ensure that they got an education. Also, another educator in our community is Mr. Dorothy Lightburn. Ms. Dorothy Goldsmith for education and humanitarian because she takes the kids with cancer to New York every year. One resident gave an example of the many great Bahamian stories that remain untold. The late Captain Stan Lockhart is one of them. He was the first Bahamian to take a, a boat from, from the Bahamas to Canada but only to the compass. And anything that has the great significance of family in marine life. And um, in Grand Bahama, including the Bahamas in the boat, he died um, two years ago from prostate cancer. Co-chairman of the committee, Peter Adderley, says we must give deserving Bahamians their accolades while they are alive. I got so many calls about John Martin after he died about that Eight Mile Rock gym. You know what it would have been like to see John Martin walk through that gym, being named after him? Former Ambassador C.A. Smith had this suggestion for the committee. Our population is 85% black, 15% white, the other Indians. I believe you ought to have a voice from that segment in our society in your community. And I believe that there are a number of persons in Grand Bahama who are of that hue who might be useful in your deliberation. Businessman Reverend Hayward Cooper and the late John Roll were also recommended to be recognized for their contributions to the development of Grand Bahama's economy. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Now tonight, the Tellus Town Meetings Committee will visit the West End community. The meeting will be held at the St. Mary Magdalene Parish Hall. Tonight, the committee 
will make a stop at the 8 Mile Walk Gym. In other news, police are investigating a burglary and armed robbery at a home in Hudson Estate. Around 2 o'clock this morning, a suspect reportedly entered a home and robbed the occupants of cash and valuables. The suspect is described as about 6 feet tall, slim built, wearing dark clothing with hood, mask and armed with a handgun. Now anyone with any information that can assist the police with their investigation is asked to contact the police at telephone numbers 350-3107-350-3108-911 or 919 rather or con contact your nearest police station. In other news, investigations are continuing into that blaze that caused serious structural damage to Zion Baptist Church on East Sunrise Highway. The fire has resulted in the congregation being displaced, and it has raised more questions about the firefighting efforts on Grand Bahama. Shakara Trot has the story. A tent is now erected as a makeshift sanctuary on the Zion Baptist Church grounds. Following a devastating fire, the membership is giving God praise in an outdoor setting. And senior pastor of Zion Baptist Church Freeport, Pastor Peter Pinder says, while the structure was damaged, they will not be deterred. It's a reminder to us that the church is not the building, but that the church is the people. And that's one of the things that I will emphasize on tomorrow so that, so that our people will recognize that, okay, yes, uh, we may have a setback as far as the building is concerned, but we do not have to have a setback as far as the work of the church is concerned. The building was constructed in 1977, and Pinder says the church was in the process of preparing for extensive renovations. A computer and copy machine were the only items they were able to salvage. According to leader of the local Christian community, Bishop Arnold Pinder Jr. and first vice president of the council, Reverend Keith Meadows, the body of believers have already lifted prayers for the church, and the council is prepared to support the Zion Baptist Church family. We are in this together. And no matter what denomination uh, we are from, we were, we were all here to show uh, that we are in this together. And um, the Bible says, Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things were together for good to them that love the Lord. So even out of this negative looking situation, we know that something good is about to happen. In spite of what the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn this around for the good. And at the end of the day, I can guarantee you um, this ministry and this church is going to rise up and build and they're going to get, be better than they've been before. Member of Parliament for Marco City, Gregory Moss, has taken a personal interest in the matter and Senator Tanisha Tynes is asking the community to pitch in. This church is, is extremely relevant to this community and I'm so happy to see Pastor Pinder is bouncing back quickly. I see his tent about to go up um, and I was very pleased to see the, the kind of camaraderie that the other members of the faith um, pastors of the cloth came out and uh, sharing here and I've said to Pastor Pinder just to rest assured that I will monitor this personally and directly and that um, he is to feel um, very comfortable um, speaking with me if he has any concerns about the progress of the investigation. This is what it's all about. We have to come together as a family um, no matter what denomination you are but this is where some of our brothers and sisters come to worship and um, we just need to hold it together. The cost of the damage is believed to be around $400,000. Shakara Trot, ZNS Network News. The campaign is now in overdrive for the June 11th BUT elections. Tonight, a challenger for the post of area vice president for Grand Bahama is responding to comments made by a sitting executive while highlighting his platform for this event. Can you do what, has been, what I've been doing in the union over the last five years? Are you a negotiator? Have you ever negotiated a contract? Do you have any training in contract negotiations? Have you ever been a part of constructing a collective bargaining agreement? Can anybody call on you in an instance to represent them? Do you know the laws? Do you know the policies? PUT Area Vice President Candidate Vincent Roll is taking exception to these comments made by Quentin LaRota, current AVP. He says negotiation skills are learned and adds that just like LaRota was given a chance and was able to prove himself, he has the ability to do the same thing. His ability is something he had to acquire. This is not nothing that he just 
was able to do automatically. When you are a kid, you don't automatically learn how to walk and how to talk. You've got to creep first. You've got to go through a particular process. Uh, what he has on me is the fact that he was able to serve in the capacity as a member of the negotiation team in that before. I've never had that wonderful privilege. And it is often said that you will never know what a person can do unless you give them the opportunity. The AVP hopeful says he decided to run for the position for a number of reasons. There was a lot of nudging and encouragement from teachers. Um, I feel also internally driven to make a difference. And also, I'm a teacher. Fundamentally, that is the reason because uh, I'm in there every single day sacrificing with teachers. I'm in the trench. I know exactly what teachers have to endure on a day-to-day -day basis. Roll says with his educational training, shop steward experience, and various leadership positions, he knows what it takes to give members of the BUT the right representation. He shares what he would like to see changed if elected. There are a lot of instances still where teachers are going on but haven't, haven't been paid gratuities or haven't been paid for uh, various different things that they have already worked for. And it, the ministry has no problem with cutting your salary, none whatsoever. But when it comes to you, you being paid back, sometimes it takes forever. There's a need for more transparency of union funds, both at the district level and also at the uh, national level. There's also a need for more accountability to the district. There's a need for more incentives to motivate teachers in this district. In news from the health beat, officials of the Grand Bahama Health Services are gearing up for Hospital Month 2013. Members of the committee have planned an entire month of activities beginning with Patient Day on July 1st. Now, according to Hospital Administrator Catherine Weish, all efforts are geared towards educating the community on the role of the Grand Bahama Health Services in providing primary health care. To highlight some of the contributions that have been made by partners who have already joined hands with us. Um, over the many years. We recognize also that this year is the, 20th, the 40th anniversary of independence. <clears throat> and as an independent country, um, we are delighted to be able to celebrate um, some of the independence that we too share by, coming, by becoming a corporate entity. Now, the theme for the annual observance is bridging the health care gap through corporate partnerships. Chairperson of the first ever summer camp, Betty Kemp, says the camp is expected to educate students on healthy living. It will serve two purposes. First of all, to provide wholesome activities to children out on school break. And more importantly, to provide our children with vital information and education um, in regards to healthy lifestyles. Some of the main areas of focus during the camp will be as follows. We will be talking to them about the importance of good nutrition and giving them the tool that is necessary to select foods that would make for a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle. In addition to that, we will be inviting the dentistry department to come to talk to our children on good oral hygiene, how to brush, how to floss their th teeth, and foods that would increase dental caries. Personal hygiene is also a very important um, topic for children, and so we will be talking to them about good grooming habits. Now, the Health Partners Banquet is the featured event and seeks to raise funds for improvements to the RAND facilities and purchase additional equipment.